But in that, let's open up in prayer. Lord God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would come, that you would guide me in your words. Lord God, that you would truly anoint me and use me as a vessel to bless my brothers and sisters. And I pray that you would give them hearts to receive and ears to hear and eyes to see what you have for them. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Starting in our text. And this is after I'm uh, picking up in the series that I'll be speaking today and uh, next week, uh, following uh, Pastor Ron's book about you know uh, the crucifixion of Jesus and then the resurrection. But when the resurrection came, there was a lot of people who didn't still didn't believe. We are we are going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. And it's like a, this is a, a God thing. You know, Ernie brought up that hey, it's got to be through the power of the Spirit. That's what we're going to be speaking on in the next two weeks. Amen. Is that you know yeah. It's our duty to go out and tell the world, but but the Great Commission, you know, Jesus said, go and tell the world and, and preach the gospel. It stops with, but wait, before you do that, first go and wait, and I'm going to send the Spirit. And, and what it's talking about, another like me in the Greek, it's just like Jesus. The difference is, Jesus was in one spot at one time. The Holy Spirit can be everywhere. Right? The Holy Spirit can fill us and empower us to, to go everywhere. But picking up our story, we got two guys here who aren't believers. I mean, they're believers in Jesus, but they, they you know, thought he died. Verse 13, And behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things which had taken place. While they were talking and discussing Jesus himself approached, began traveling with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they stood still, looking sad. One of them named Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things of Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, in the sight of God and all the people, and how the chief priests and all rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he was, um, hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. <laughs> Our first one. But also some women among us amazed, uh, us amazed us. When they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body, they came saying, they also had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it exactly as the women also had said, but him they did not see. By the way, who did the angels appear to? Mary. The women, yeah. not the men. Yeah. See, the women followed Jesus to the tomb. The men boogied out. Picking up verse 25. And he said to them, O oh, foolish men, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. Can you imagine what kind of Bible study that was? <laughs> well, let's move on. As they approached the village where they were going, and he acted as though he was going further. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. Jesus acts as though he's going to go on. Hey, this has happened before. So he went in to stay with him, verse 30. When he reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it. And breaking it, he began giving it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. So he took the bread, he broke it, handed it to them. What did they see? What did they see? The nails. Verse 32. They said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road while he was explaining the scriptures to us? I'll cover a few more verses here. Um, in Mark it says that they returned and the disciples, the apostles, still didn't believe them. <laughs> I love that part. We just saw Jesus. No, you didn't. Now, how are you going to tell someone what they did or didn't see? <laughs> right? right? The guy comes back and goes, I saw Jesus. And you're like, you weren't there. No, you didn't. 
<laughs> First, let's jump down to uh, verse 36. While they were telling these things, he himself stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be to, be to you. Peace be to you. Verse 37. Amen. But they were startled and frightened and thought that they were seeing the Spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you doubt? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that is, I myself. Touch me and see me, for the Spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Well, they still could not believe it because of their joy and amazement. He said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. 44. Now he said to them, These are my words I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Get to you, verse 45. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. 45. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise again from the dead the third day, and that repentance and for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning with Jerusalem. You are witness of these things. Behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Holy Spirit, which we'll be talking about next week. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that you are, are always with us. The Lord God, I pray that your spirit would just come right now. Lord God, and I just pray that um, if there's anyone in this room that doesn't know you, that they would come forward and, and just pray with these brothers and sisters up here. If there's anyone in here that, that needs to recommit their life to you, Lord Jesus, I pray that they would come forward. And those people, Lord God, have been stumbling or would like your power to go out and just live a life worthy of you so that they can witness to you about you and have the, the dynamic power that you want to offer them. I pray that they too would come forward. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.